The 2022 revamp of The Witcher 3 set out to be the best version of the game possible, a version taking full advantage of PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, S and PC systems to add ray tracing features, high res textures, greater world detail and quality of life improvements. Except, this next gen revamp also brought about its own issues like troubled sub 60 fps performance on ps5 and series x and obviously sub 30 fps frame rates when using the ray tracing mode hot fixes came and went the most glaring stuff like crashes were addressed quite quickly and then later updates like patch 4.01 also improved the 30 fps lock in its ray tracing mode on ps5 and series x so good news but in doing so in improving the ray tracing mode Patch 4.01 also made the frame rate situation worse in the 60fps performance mode. So in summary, better in the 30fps ray tracing mode, worse in the 60fps performance mode. One step forward and one step back. And so, the wait for an ultimate console release of The Witcher 3 went on. That is, until this latest patch, 4.02, which I'm glad to say addresses many of these issues. Developer CD Projekt Red's patch notes are as exhaustive as usual. Right at the very top, for console, we have a note that performance mode frame rates are improved, which we'll get to. Other highlights include the return of the HBAO option on PC, which also sees improved CPU optimization on DirectX 12. We also have a motion blur intensity slider on all formats, which solves another problem we had at launch with the game, with the sheer intensity of the effect toggled on. So, great stuff. And lastly, there's a subtle improvement to screen space and ray trace reflections on all formats, with the addition of refraction to reflections across water bodies. But the focus today is really on the performance. As a kind of chronicle of our testing so far, how does the latest patch 4.02 stack up against the previous patch and the launch build? Is The Witcher 3 the best it's ever been on a console like PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X and likewise on Series S? Let's find out. Straight in with the frame rate testing, kicking off with PlayStation 5. I've actually zoomed into the graph range for a change in this video, focusing on 40 to 60 FPS rather than the usual 20 to 60 FPS, just to make this three-way split more readable. Still. It's clear there is an upgrade for patch 4.02 on the far right here. That often puts the reading above even the launch build on the far left. Take combat for example. Just before the Blood and Wine expansion starts, we get this bandit battle alongside the soldiers of Toussaint. The good news being that patch 4.02 completely reverses the performance impact brought upon by the last patch. And in fact, we're at a practically flat 60fps line right the way through, which again, betters the launch build here. Naturally, there's just no way to sync up the gameplay for this one, but the divide is very clear cut, I think. TDPR's continued work patching the game is paying off, and in other cases, like this early cutscene, the results again undo the damage done by patch 4.01, and it's broadly in the same ballpark to where it was before. Prospects look good so far then. Patch 4.02 is either better or at least on par with the launch build. The Witcher 3 is now evidently more playable this way with a tighter 60fps lock, and so it goes for the horse riding across open areas, at a canter, or even full sprint. CDPR's update fixes what was broken on patch 4.01, putting us at a flat 60fps line once more on PS5. Now, I wish I could say it's a perfect 60 across the board now, but some areas do remain persistent stress points for PS5 and Series X, which I'll get to even four months on past release. And by that I mean Novigrad City still has trouble locking to 60. Through two separate runs, on foot and by horseback, each time Novigrad seems to run worse on the new patch overall. But in fairness, Novigrad's Hierarch Square is impossible to sync up perfectly given NPCs spawn in at different positions with every run. So there is some variability here on CPU load which isn't accounted for. Regardless, the bottom line, on patch 4.02, expect to still find a range between 50 to 60 FPS in the big city.
On balance then, for PS5, it's a net improvement overall, putting Novigrad aside at least. And from extensive back and forth between shots, there's no real downgrade as a sacrifice, visually speaking, between this and the last patch. The battles, the cutscenes, the horseback travel out in the open world, all are marked improvements in lock into 60 FPS on PS5, but what about Series X? Well, this is where we see an even bigger uptick in performance gains, and to demonstrate, let's hone in on just the latest patch 4.02 versus the previous update 4.01 on Series X. Again, in every area, it's an outright improvement from battling to horseback riding, the new patch restores us to 60 FPS. But what's especially encouraging is Novigrad City is also clearly improved in the same breath, unlike on PS5. It's worth saying that Series X started out at a far worse point here performance-wise, and so there was much more ground to cover. So, in summary, again, the latest update puts The Witcher 3 in a better place than ever before. Performance mode at 60fps is still my recommended way to play by a long stretch, even sacrificing the ray tracing features at 30fps. And for Xbox Series X users, it was a shame to see frame rate struggling to hit 60fps before, where it often fell below PS5's level, but now it's a much easier choice to make. So where does this leave us in the console comparisons? Bearing in mind both premium consoles get an upgrade here, how do they rank side by side on the latest patch? Interestingly, the game is now 60fps locked for a bulk of play on both PS5 and Series X, and where it does dip, Novigrad again in particular, the two are practically matching in their readings. Drops to the 50fps line are still a reality on both sides, alas, and if we are to split hairs on this, Series X does run marginally worse in a horseback run across Hyrax Square by 2 to 3 FPS on average. Series X also plays with infrequent flashes of screen tearing right at the top of the frame, unlike on PS5, but in general, it's a decent turnout if you have variable refresh rate support, VRR, on your TV. VRR will deal with these 50 to 60 FPS readings nicely. Interestingly, the only other thing to note is that this early cutscene runs better on Series X, so it's not an absolute case of one being better than the other. Be it PS5 or Series X then, this is the build we've been waiting for. More stable, more polished with improved SSR, and there's more options to tailor the game how you like, including a motion blur slider. And the performance mode hits the mark more consistently at 60fps above all, up to and including the infamous Crookback Bog area. There are some outliers, some stubborn stress points like this wedding sequence, which my colleague John Linneman pointed out as still taxing for PS5, even on patch 4.02. And this is between 50 to 60fps throughout. But otherwise, really, it's a success in most areas. Now, the same applies to Xbox Series S here, if we switch over. The entirety of this Novigrad run is again improved on Series S by up to 8 to 10 FPS over the last patch. The resolution also stays at a dynamic 1080p, dropping to close to 900p in stress points, and so the end result, performance-wise, for this 4 teraflop machine is ultimately similar to PS5 and Series X in hitting 60 FPS, Though for both of those premium machines, we have a 4K resolution target instead. All of which leaves us with a quick note on the state of the 30fps ray tracing mode. In a nutshell, well, there's no obvious improvement on the latest patch. On PS5, it still broadly hits 30fps, though obvious sub-30 drops stay in place in Novigrad. And it's the same story on Series X, no change whatsoever from patch 4.01, though this RT mode was always a more consistent 30fps on that machine anyway. In comparison then between the two in this latest patch, Series X retains the lead all round. Around Novigrad for example, PS5 drops to as low as 26fps, four consistent stretches in the high right square, where Microsoft's machine pushes through at 30 without much issue. It's even the case for GPU-intensive cutscenes, where Series X again takes the lead. So, if you do want to see ray-traced ambient occlusion and ray-traced global illumination in effect, Series X is still the better performer as of the latest patch. Combined with the varying degrees of motion blur, which are selectable via the new slider, the ray-tracing mode is now much nicer to use too, but I will say, on PS5 or Series X, 
the input latency using this mode is still noticeably high. Even on patch 4.02, latency comes in at 140 milliseconds on PS5's ray tracing mode, for example, compared to a much lower 74 milliseconds using its 60 FPS performance mode. That's a huge difference, and it's felt pretty immediately in camera movement switching between the two modes. Is this the ultimate version of The Witcher 3 then? Well, we're not 100% there, let's be honest, but it's great to see that the effort from CDPR continues unabated. The performance mode on console receives all the love on patch 4.02 and it pays off, especially on Series X and Series S where frame rates are boosted by as much as 10 FPS. The complete edition has never performed better on Xbox. As for PS5, it's again promising, restoring it to the launch day frame rate level or better, the only lingering issue is the ray tracing mode, a mode that looks gorgeous and still frames and benefits from the motion blur slider in this latest patch, but still suffers from sub 30 FPS drops on PS5. And again, I still find the ray tracing mode hard to enjoy with the extra latency it adds to the controls. Perhaps one answer to The Witcher 3's ray tracing mode latency on console to push the frame rate higher and therefore lower latency is a 120Hz output option with a 40fps cap similar to Ratchet and Clank of Rift Apart. Now, a 40fps cap would at least improve the average frame time, the control latency, compared to the regular 30fps cap we have here by around 8 milliseconds. In theory, this would help, so long as the game obviously hits 40fps consistently. And with the work CDPR's put in since the game's release, four months on, it'd be interesting to see if such a feature is still possible on the team's Red Engine. But that's all from me today. If you did find this video useful or insightful in any way, feel free to like or subscribe and don't forget to hit that bell for instant notifications as any new video lands. To get a high quality version of this video, check out our Patreon at digitalfoundry.net and to get in touch directly, just use Twitter as usual. But for me for now, thanks for watching.